Hello and welcome to the first part of the tutorial reversing with HyperDVG. HyperDVG is a hypervisor based debugger uh, which is designed for reverse engineering, for analyzing and for fuzzing. And here is probably the first uh, tutorial about the HyperDVG and it's the comprehensive guide to HyperDVG debuggers. So in this tutorial we're gonna see how we can use this debugger and uh, we will see some techniques that we will use it uh, to enhance our debugging and reverse engineering. So let's see. First of all, uh, I'm Sina, just uh, a person interested in programming, Windows internals, micro, micro architecture and different things. Here's a link to my blog and my Twitter account and my email. I'm also a developer of HyperDBG debugger and you can always reach me and ask me questions if you have any questions about this debugger. This is the first uh, part of the tutorial and we're gonna see a course outline of uh, what we're gonna do during this uh, tutorial. Uh, <laughs> this part or the first session, uh, we have an introduction and overview of the debugger, we will see uh, the outline of uh, different uh, different uh, sessions of this tutorial and we will see some some of the frequently asked questions then we will compare HyperDBG with other debuggers and of course we'll compare it with WinDBG we will see some of its unique features and we'll introduce hypervisor from uh, scratch and, and at last we have a summary so that's it, that's uh, the overview of this session and uh, there's a, a Murphy's Law that say anything that can possibly uh, go wrong will eventually go wrong. So let's see, <laughs> here's the first uh, session of uh, HyperDVG and first we have some, uh, some uh, we have to answer to some of the frequently asked questions. The first question is what is HyperDVG? Uh, so you probably have some ideas about this debugger, but HyperDVG is an open source hypervisor assisted debugger, uh, which is used for debugging both user mode and kernel mode application. And who, who uses HyperDVG? Of course, programmers, security researchers, mal malware analyzers, and fuzzer programmers use HyperDVG. And why do we need HyperDVG? The uh, HyperDVG gives us unique abilities to use mo modern processor features uh, and these processor features are uh, combined in a way that assists us to visiting the uh, visiting different targets uh, like we will, we can uh, it will assist us to uh, use uh, so we can use it in our reverse engineering journey and uh, another question is what makes HyperDVG different from classic debuggers? Uh, the thing is that HyperDVG has a completely unique uh, architecture and there are some uh, principles uh, in uh, designing HyperDVG. One of them is we want uh, to have an OS independent debugger that uh, wants to use some of the modern processor features to generate and to make some uh, new techniques for the reverse engineering and uh, the thing is uh, these features are not available in any other debuggers so HyperDVG is mainly designed for the reverse engineering uh, and the the, in the, the differences between HyperDVG and WinDVG uh, because uh, WinDVG is probably uh, one of the things that is uh, may might be similar to the HyperDVG in some aspects, but uh, the differences between HyperDVG and uh, WinDVG is that uh, <clears throat> HyperDVG has a completely different architecture. WinDVG mainly operates on a kernel mode or in ring zero, while HyperDVG running on ring minus one or hypervisor and HyperDVG provides uh, some of the unique features that are not available in, in OS level or in kernel mode. Uh, and besides that, uh, HyperDVG is of course not a simple uh, debugger. It, 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 it uh, comes with a lot of methods uh, by using uh, Intel VTX and modern processor facilities. 
to ease the reverse engineering, analyzing and fuzzing. Another question is, is it uh, only for a special processor or can I run it on AMD or, or, or ARM processor? The answer to this question is that the current version of HyperDBG only supports x64 processors of Intel. Uh, and uh, in the current stage, uh, you cannot run a HyperDBG on an AMD processor or an ARM processor, but uh, prob uh, future uh, versions will probably support other processors as well. And another thing is what generation of Intel processor supports HyperDBG? The answer uh, to this question uh, is uh, that your processor should at least support Intel EPT, uh, which is introduced uh, on post Nehalem uh, micro microarchitecture. Uh, so, uh, so some of the functionalities only work on in on the fourth gener generation or later generation of Intel processors. And the uh, processor, uh, uh, previous processor, uh, uh, I mean, older than the fourth generation might have some undefined behaviors with some of the functionalities. Uh, but generally it's recommended to use uh, an uh, sixth generation uh, or later processor or newer processor uh, for running HyperDBG. Uh, can I use it on Linux or Mac OS X? Uh, well, no, the current version of HyperDBG is only limited uh, to Windows 10 and Windows 11. Uh, but uh, it, it's one of our top priorities that uh, we want to port it on Linux, but it's currently only usable on Windows. Uh, it's all, it also supports Windows 11 as well. I just mentioned Windows 10 here, but it supports Windows 11 as well. And another question is, should I have a separate machine to use HyperDBG? And the answer to this question is, of course not. Uh, you don't have to have, uh, you don't have to make some uh, other uh, separate machines. You can use your own machine. Uh, but the problem of not having a separate machine is that you can only operate on VMI uh, mode. Uh, I will explain about the VMI mode. Uh, but in VMI mode, uh, you can debug your own system like local debugging of WinDBG. And just like WinDBG, you cannot halt your system or you cannot break or step through the instructions in your own system. But if you use some uh, virtualization uh, software like VMware Workstation, uh, you can also use these features. You can debug. Uh, high, you can debug uh, in the debugger mode. I will explain about the debugger mode later. And all of the features of HyperDBG are also available on uh, whenever you want to debug, for example, a VMware a Workstation machine. Uh, you can step through the instruction, you can pause the target operating system, all of them are available there. Another question is, can I use it on a nested virtualization environment like VMware, VirtualBox, or Hyper-V? Uh, the current version of the HyperDBG only tested on VMware uh, Workstation. Uh, it, 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 uh, I think VMware player doesn't support nested virtualization. I, I'm not sure, but uh, if it's not support, uh, if it uh, won't support or not supporting uh, nested virtualization, then HyperDB cannot run it, run on it. But uh, the future version, probably in the future version, will support all of the virtualization platforms. For example, will support Hyper-V. I'm not sure uh, about other uh, virtualization pro uh, platforms. It might work, you have to test it, but uh, HyperDBG is well tested on VMware Workstation and in, in a physical machine without any uh, nested virtualization environment. Uh, how can I start reading about HyperDBG internals? How does it work and can I contribute to the HyperDBG? Uh, HyperDBG is an open source project. Of course, like all the other projects, you can go and uh, contribute on GitHub. Uh, and the best source for this, for learning the internals of HyperDBG is Hypervisor from a scratch tutorial. You can search about this tutorial. And for the contribution, you can also follow the contribution guides in the GitHub page.
Now let's compare HyperDBG with other debuggers. Uh, in, in the modern protected mode uh, plus paging enabled systems, there are seven protection links in interclass souls. Uh, the first ring is uh, ring three, which is designed for user mode application. Uh, ring two and ring one, which is not used, uh, are uh, previously uh, designed for device drivers. And the zeroth uh, ring is the kernel uh, kernel uh, mode, which operating system will run in this uh, ring of execution. Ring minus one is uh, for hypervisors. Ring minus two is for system management more or SMM, and ring minus three is uh, for Intel management engine. Uh, HyperDVG uh, run, runs on uh, hypervisor level or ring minus one, while Microsoft WinDVG or GDB, Geno Debugger or LLDB, all of them run, run on uh, ring zero, like a kernel mode uh, module. And x64 DVG, EDB, or part of the GDB, OLDVG, Immunity Debugger, and WinDVG have some modules to run on user mode. So HyperDBG is more privileged in terms of terminology. So let's see some of these debuggers. Uh, these are the kernel debugger family members. These, uh, these are the debuggers that are able to uh, uh, debug a, a kernel of the operating system. First, we have WinDBG, which has over 30 years of development and Windows is made by using WinDVG. WinDVG is not open source, but its source code is leaked several times uh, behind the source code of the Windows. Then we have LLDB, which is mostly used for OS X. Uh, it's an um, OS X debugger uh, made by uh, researchers and it's also open source. Uh, we have uh, GDB, uh, which is the main uh, kernel debugger for Linux, and it's also an open source debugger. And HyperDVG is a new family member to these native debuggers. So HyperDVG is more privileged in terms of rings in Intel processors. It has some unique features, which is mainly designed for the reverse engineering. And it, it has an efficient and complicated design, which is hidden by its nature. And it uh, combines the academic innovation uh, with practical implementation and is of course open source. And another, uh, t another note here is that uh, you can debug WinDBG or any other kernel debuggers with HyperDBG. So let's see the differences between HyperDBG and WinDBG. The main difference is that hyper that WinDBG is designed for development purposes, while HyperDBG is mainly designed with a reverse engineering mindset. Uh, Microsoft uh, originally made this debugger to perf uh, to uh, ease the uh, de driver development and OS development, and uh, HyperDBG, on the other hand, is mainly designed to be used for the reverse engineering. Uh, so uh, in the in scenarios when you don't have any idea about the target debuggy, uh, you can it's better to use HyperDBG. Uh, but of course, if you want to develop some drivers, then WinDBG is a better option. Uh, when you have source code of driver, it's better to use WinDBG. But if you want to understand the mechanism in in, a, in an application, when when you don't have any access to the uh, source code or you want to analyze a malware uh, uh, or analyze a closed source uh, application uh, or, or if the symbols of an application is partially available, then HyperDVG gives you more features to explore, uh, explore your debugging. Uh, HyperDVG is not a classic debugger. The intention of HyperDVG, uh, we, we, we're not, we don't, we uh, not gonna, reinvent the wheel by uh, designing HyperDVG. Uh, the thing is that the modern binary files or modern files use sophisticated methods and techniques uh, to obfuscate uh, their internals. For example, most of the malwares use 
different anti-debugging, anti-hypervisor techniques to avoid showing, uh, for example, in, the, in terms of malware, they avoid showing their malicious behavior uh, when a debugger is running. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, on the other hand, the classic debuggers are not suitable to analyze the internal mechanisms that are buried into the complicated operating system module. In these cases, it's better to use the HyperDBG debugger. Being a hypervisor debugger uh, gives HyperDBG new magical features and uh, these magical features exist in HyperDBG. Hyper we will see all of them, most of them uh, in, in the coming parts. And these uh, features will drastically enhance your uh, reverse engineering journey. Uh, and HyperDBG is uh, more transparent by its nature. For example, uh, generally being only in hypervisor level makes HyperDBG more transparent than uh, WinDBG. And another thing is HyperDBG didn't use any debugging related API. So even the operating system itself doesn't have any idea that it's being debugged by the HyperDBG and it's also not the only thing HyperDBG also hides, uh, tries to hide itself uh, from some of the timing, microarchitectural micro timing attacks uh, that reveals the uh, presence of hypervisor and transparency is always a priority for the HyperDBG and is under active development. Uh, another difference between HyperDBG and WinDBG is that HyperDBG is a community-driven debugger which is open source and everyone could contribute to, the, to this project while uh, WinDBG is not open source. WinDBG uh, works on multiple architecture like ARM processors, AMD processors, while HyperDBG only works on uh, Intel processors. Uh, uh, in x64 bit processors but uh, also you can also debug x86 uh, or 32 bit uh, programs uh, by using HyperDBG and HyperDBG is tremendously faster than WinDBG it's because uh, it's, uh, it comes with a VMX root mode compatible script engine and everything is performed in the kernel so it has a different design and nothing is uh, passed to the debugger. Everything is done in the kernel and thus is thousands of times faster than, uh, than WinDBG. There's also an academic paper about the HyperDBG. You can uh, see how, how uh, we compared uh, HyperDBG uh, with WinDBG and how HyperDBG is faster than WinDBG and why it's faster. So if uh, in conclusion, if, we, if I want to pre present the pros and cons, WinDBG is best for uh, source code debugging and it supports multiple architecture as well as uh, many uh, programming uh, scripting uh, languages for uh, many programming languages for script, for its script engine like JavaScript and the cons is it's not open source and it's also a uh, slow in debugging function with high rate of execution. For the HyperDBG, it has a very fast script engine, tens of innovative features that, that are designed for the reverse engineering and it's also more transparent than WinDBG. And for the cons, it doesn't support many architectures, it only supports Intel uh, processors in the current version and some of the commands are not compatible with patch code. So let's see some of these unique features. Uh, in the first version of HyperDBG, HyperDBG supports classic hidden hooks that HyperDBG has. We will talk about all of these features in, in the coming uh, sessions of this tutorial, so don't worry about it. But for now, HyperDBG supports classical uh, EPT hooks uh, like hidden breakpoints, as well as inline EPT hooks or detours style hooks. And it also has some monitoring uh, for memory. It, it tries to emulate the hardware debug register without any limitation in the count and size. Uh, it also has some syscall and sysret hooks. Uh, you can disable, you can uh, hook any execution of any uh, system call uh, in the operating system. And when it returns to the user mode, 
هایپر دیویژن هست سی پی و آی دی هوکس اند مانیتورز از ویل از آر دی ام اس آر اند دبلیو آر ام اس آر هوکس بیسایدز دات آر دی تی اس سی آر دی تی اس سی پی اند آر دی پی ام سی هوکس آر آلسو اویلیبل این دیس دیبگر ایت هوکس اینی انٹریکشنز ویت دی هاردوئر دیبگ رجسترز اند مانیتورز دم ایت آلسو هاز ا unlimited uh, number of uh, IO port and unlimited number of out, uh, IO port out instruction hooking and monitoring so you can uh, debug uh, PMIO devices as well as MMIO devices and then uh, it has a feature to hook and monitor exceptions or uh, external interrupts it can uh, monitor the IDT Uh, you you can also use HyperDVG to run automated scripts. Uh, it has a, a strong transparent mode, uh, which is anti debugging and anti hypervisor resistance. It's under development. It won't guarantee one hundred percent of transparency, but it's quite good. Uh, and it also runs custom assembly codes in both VMX root and VMX non root mode in the kernel and the user mode. as well as process specific and thread specific commands uh, with a powerful kernel side scripting engine it also supports symbol for uh, symbol uh, interpretations or a symbol uh, parsing uh, it supports the parsing of pdb files it has uh, an event forwarding mechanism and uh, as well as transparent breakpoint handler some uh, other concept like short circuiting events we will uh, we will uh, we will talk about these features later in this tutorial and how we can track the execution by using hyper dvg and it also has some some of the very uh, some uh, custom scripts so the best way to learn hyper dvg internals and, and start contributing on this project is Uh, start reading the hypervisor from scratch the, this is uh, this tutorial is mainly designed uh, to teach uh, hypervisor concept so you can learn it and after that hyperdvg is mainly an extension to the hypervisor from a, a scratch the hypervisor from a scratch source code is enhanced uh, the hyperdvg is made uh, based on this source code and uh, this is these are other parts of this tutorial so make sure to read it if you want to contribute on this project uh, and uh, the last thing is uh, if you have any uh, questions you can uh, ask your questions in the github discussions and i will see you uh, in the next section so thanks a lot for watching